This video will demonstrate using a Raspberry Pi as an audio conference node using the software called Saren. You can have about 10 people participating in this audio conference. And what's unique about Saren is with this one node, if everybody connects the IP address of this Raspberry Pi node, they'll automatically be connected to everybody else in a full mesh network, peer-to-peer -peer network of audio using the Opus codec and you can set the bitrate. We're using stereo and about 64k bitrate here. We're using stereo to separate the, the audio channels so that you can have individual audio in each channel. One for Morse code audio tones and the other for voice in case you wanted to have a voice QSO. So we're going to demonstrate that. I'm going to demonstrate the Raspberry Pi itself uh, uh, sending voice and Morse code. We're going to receive that on the laptop node, the CW op one but it also goes to CW op 2 of course. Here's what the Raspberry Pi looks like and it's connected with its USB sound card. We have two speakers so that it separates the left and right sides. The one on the right here is for Morse code since it's using a uh, tuner as a kind of a resonant tube there to amplify a Morse code at a certain tone of about 700 hertz and it at least doubles it if not more the loudness of it. So this is a very effective and all this is is a bass port with an adjustable second sleeve there so you can kind of tune it to the pitch you want. So we're going to transmit into the Raspberry Pi because I'm using a USB sound card that has line input. So we're going to send Morse code audio tones into that input as well as voice audio. And we're going to look at it from the laptop's perspective. We have the thing on the left here called Saren Output, which is going to mini host modular to the speaker so I can hear it and to the screen recorder so you can hear it. The scope on the bottom right is set up for stereo for left and right channels. The green top one is for the Morse code audio tones and here is the Raspberry Pi transmitting iambic pedal CW tones. And now we're going to turn the voice up and it will send voice audio on the other channel. So that's the first criterion. The second is sustained use. So a word needs to actually have kind of a long shelf life because most words come into the language and either don't have much written use for a long time or they have a lot of written use and then they drop out of use for and so the Raspberry Pi is sounding really good, both on the audio for the uh, Morse code and the voice. So that gives you two options during uh, QSO or a CW net. So you, uh, once you've finished with your Morse code, maybe you want to talk a bit and speed up the conversation or talk into some details that are maybe very difficult to uh, code out, spelling some weird words or something, some complicated technical words that aren't that easy uh, not only to send but to copy so then you have the option of using the mic so now I'm going to send to from the laptop to the Raspberry Pi and of course to the other op CW op 2 CW op 2 is in the other is in another location and I, I have a screen for that but I'll show you that in just a second right now I'm going to send from this laptop we're going to use Aqualung to send voice and FL Digi here to send Morse code to the Pi, you'll be able to hear what the Pi is hearing on those speakers because I have a, that USB webcam that has a mic. So this mic here is not the best and it's just mono, but it'll give you an idea. So this is what it sounds like from those speakers by the Pi here. It's being picked up by the webcam. So I'm going to send some Morse code now from FL Digi and it and now we'll send some audio from a podcast. On your QRZ page, you show an elaborate farm of wire antennas in your desert location. Oh, yes. What antennas do you have on your property? <laughs> okay. So that's working very well, so I'm able to send audio, and this is full duplex, so we can all be talking at the same time, just like normal conversation at times, when you're trying to interject or, or during Mars code if you have a QSK break-in. So that works pretty good. Now we'll go to the other op, 
CW op 3 and send from his computer right here. So I'll send some Morse code and as you can see he's CW op, CW op 2 on the top and whatever audio he sends out goes to whoever's connected. So in this instance, the Raspberry Pi and CW Op 1, which is this laptop here. And so let me turn off the audio from the webcam here. And we'll do that again. Okay, and then we'll have audio voice sending on the, the channel. Gold. And okay. <laughs> normally, I only point that out because this show, Triangulation, has featured people who have like a long life career, let's say, in technology. Okay, so everybody hears everybody and up to 10 people. This, this is a great program and it uses Opus and it's very well coded. So it has a, a great sense as far as a, its ability to handle packet delays, packet losses, packet loss concealment. And there's a little bit of a learning curve as far as the, the command line stuff to get into the terminal itself and then to connect to each other. But the connection is just basically slash C and then the IP address of who any, actually you can have the IP address of any other op and it'll automatically connect you to the rest of the people. So. You, if you had the, only the IP ad address of CDO Op 1, you could still connect with everybody else because Saren does that automatically. It's a great program. And it works great for Morse code and for voice. And it's uh, pretty effective, I think, at, at doing its job. And I think that's just about all I, I needed to show. So give Saren a try, see what you think. Thank you for watching.